Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 9. It's an infused e-glass panel with balsa core. The skins are made of 9 and 12 ounce e-glass woven on the face and the biaxial against the core. The resin is ProSet 114 LV. So here I am with the glass laid out and a sheet of clean Teflon to lay up on. I'm warming up the table here because I'm working in a relatively cool place. So the table surface is about 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've got the two layers of material down. This is the balsa up close. You can see I've drilled holes in it about every two inches. That's to let the resin flow through. On more contoured shapes the resin will flow through the channels of the balsa and the balsa would be placed upside down from the way it is here with the scrim on the inside of the contour but uh, in this case I need some way for resin to flow through reliably so I've drilled holes in it and putting the top skin on this is a balanced laminate about the core the biaxial is plus or minus 45 to the edges of the material and the 090 woven on the face it's a tight weave satin 7781 is uh, 090 got my peel ply here. I've cut the laminate back right even with the edge of the core in hopes that I won't have much race tracking around the edge. There'll still probably be some. The peel ply overlaps a bit. And I'm tucking it in nicely around the edges to make sure that's not a problem. Instead of wrapping peel ply around this and then sticking it on, I'm just going to use that peel ply edge and some spiral wrap here taped to the end of my resin inlet tube and just fold the peel ply back over it. That's nice because it holds it in place and I'm not doubling up the peel ply on the surface. Here's the green flow mesh. I'm going to just hold it in place with a couple pieces of tape. Holding it back from the edges about an inch just to avoid some of that race tracking around the perimeter issue and making sure to lap it over the top of the feed tube and I'm holding it back from the fine, from the, the far edge by about an inch and a half to two inches. And that piece there is a piece of MTI hose, which is a permeable by air, but not permeable by resin membrane wrapped around spiral wrap. And it's nice because it won't suck up resin. It will just pull air out. It doesn't have a lot of flow compared to spiral wrap. And I'm hopefully not even going to touch it with resin here, but I'm just trying it out. I'll use it more in the future uh, and show how that works. The bag, I'm just doing this the stuck to the table way, mostly to show how much trouble it is. Um, making the pleats in place. It works nicely. This is a really good idea if your part is big or f very flat and you don't need a lot of pleats. But on anything small and relatively complicated, it makes a lot more sense to put the tacky tape sealant on the bag. But I've got the two hoses through, and the bag is just plain nylon film, and uh, it's awfully nice having the warm table because that sealant tape sticks really well. And I've um, I've put it on the Teflon here, which is not ideal, but it'll make cleaning it up a lot easier. So as the bag comes down, I just make sure that the spiral wrap on the infeed side is making good contact and should be ready to infuse. I've got a thermocouple on the top of the part and I'm mixing up the resin. This is ProSet 114LV with fast hardener. The table's pretty warm. Um, it's about 98 degrees Fahrenheit on the top and even warmer against the bottom surface of the part. This is probably a little too warm for this. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I bet it'll flow pretty quickly. So I've got the hose in there and slowly cracking open the resin inlet. You don't want to feed the resin too quickly or it will bubble and sort of overrun any remaining air that may be in the part. Um, vacuum being not complete there's always a little bit of air in there and you want to chase it out slowly and not have it rush right through there. Now I've put a clock up so you can see the time and then cropped it out of the video frame but it's going really quickly 
only a, a minute or two in here. And as it gets further along, you can see it running around the edges much more slowly. And it's taking some time to fill outside the spiral wrap. And you can see it running out to the perimeter along the kerf cuts in the balsa. Those kerf cuts transmit resin nicely. And now that it's reached the end of the flow media, it will spread slowly out on that surface. And the problem I'm going to have here is that it will shoot out through the kerf cuts and then choke off the remaining air. Uh, so it might have been a better idea here to run the flow mesh further toward the edge of the panel with foam that doesn't have the, the built-in slices necessarily or um, a single skin panel you wouldn't have this issue but with the balsa because it's contour cut uh, each of these little islands that I'm marking have become air that's, that's in there that doesn't have an easy way to get out. They'll probably fill for the most part but we may be able to see air on the back of the panel when we demold it and I'll point that out um, because the back looks probably very much like the front here. We just can't see it. And I used, this, used a fair amount of resin compared to my estimate and I'm really trying to squeak as much resin out of it as possible letting a very little bit and run out of the hose and um, before I clamp it off. But as you can see here it filled pretty much. Uh, there's still a little bit of air around the edges. That's air that couldn't make it out of the laminate and um, it's up in the peel ply. We'll see how that looks. We get the peel ply off. And there was also some air on the inlet side. Again, I'm not sure if it's from exotherm or because I had some leakiness or that's just air that rode in with the resin because I didn't degas and then floated to the top. Here's the back side of the panel after demolding. You can see the holes and the weave. There's a little bit of air. Um, it's not ideal. And there's the back of one of those holes that I pointed out and outlined in marker. Uh, that's one of the worst ones, but there's still trapped air in there. And um, overall, it's a perfectly good laminate quality, but it would be much better if I had let it soak under vacuum longer. Um, to get more of the air and moisture out of the balsa. It only set under vacuum for about half an hour. And um, here you can see me trying to pull the peel ply off. Um, the peel ply and the mesh are pretty thick themselves when they're full of resin and it's kind of hard to pull it off. So a perforated film is sometimes pretty nice or a coated peel ply. And here's the peel ply side. You can see the resin kerf. Everything is filled with resin on the balsa. And it's very nice and solid. It weighed about a one pound and half an ounce and about 469 grams. And the panel edge cleaned up very nicely. It's very rugged and um, it's a good example of infusing balsa. Thanks for checking out the Explore Composites Materials Library. See you next time.